Hello, my name is Jess. I am Jack. My name is Ocean. My name is Kitty. My name is Adam. Hello, my name is Judge. We're here to tell you all about transitions. So how exactly does this transition thing work? Hello, I'm Charlie. And this is the transition flow. One, for Pharaoh. Rivera was saved and screened by the Adult Learning Disability Team. 2. Allocate suitable referrals are then allocated a transition officer from the Adult Learning Disability Team. 3. Or about me. Then we begin to build a picture of who the individual is. This will include information sharing between you, your family, the social worker, school, your transition officer, and any others involved. 4. Options. After looking at all the options, your transition officer or social worker will apply to your chosen placements and make an application to the funding panel where necessary. And finally, five. Start. Once approved, the individual will start their chosen placements. At an agreed point, your transition officer will pass the case on to a community social worker. Remember, you can choose more than one placement, and it and if it isn't working, it can always be changed. Okay, so we understand the process. Let's talk to the people who have been through it. Hello, my name is Gary. I'm a single parent, a daughter with Down syndrome. Hello, my name is Bridgie O'Hagan, and this is my husband Paul O'Hagan. Our son Kiara O'Hagan attends Chundan, and Kiara is our only son. We have two daughters, one older, and she's Claire. She's 23 and one younger, and that is Anya, and she's 18. Hello, my name is Joanne, and I have two sons living with autism, and one with severe learning disabilities, and both my boys live at home with me, and their dad helps out also. We got the introductions out of the way. We want to hear about how families felt the first time they heard transition. So I knew what the transition process was before we went through it from my work and uh, my involvement in supporting parents previously. You realise your son's getting older at this point, and then you realise that things are going to shortly change, so you have to get your mind focused into the word transition. And we didn't really know at that point what transition was. And if we had known then what we knew now, or what we know now, it would have made it easier and more relaxed for us because he started to panic. But we were very lucky that places like Tuned and, and Art Space were open to us coming down and letting us see around the buildings and let us meet the staff and, and tell us what they were going to do for for our kids. So that made it easier. But I do remember at the school going down to the transition day and not hearing much after it for about a year. And we, we always thought we should have had more regular meetings and more regular catch-ups mm -hmm. to keep us in, in tune on what was going on. So that was maybe one bit of advice I would, I would throw out. If, if, if so, yeah. My daughter went to mainstream school, so the information was very limited um, in regards to what next steps she would be, what we could take. Um, we didn't have a lot of time to prepare, which means we were looking, f we were doing a lot of research ourselves. Um, I thought the process was pretty straightforward in the end, and you know, it was given when it was given much appreciated support from the transition social work, transition team and the social work team. So that helped, and then we were able to sort of work out social, you know, day opportunities and day centres that we could, you know, send our daughter to. All things are good. And it's good to talk about how change makes us feel. I wonder what our family biggest worries were. Well, our biggest worry for Kiara, because Kiara has um, autism with severe learning difficulties, and recently in the last year diagnosed with epilepsy as well. We were really very anxious about the, the whole transition process. We were anxious about the basic needs for Kiara, first of all, and that was toileting, um, eating, uh, where he was going to be, and where he was going to sit, who was going to protect him, who was going to watch over him. All those anxieties and fears, like any parents would, would be feeling, were really overwhelming at the time. Yeah, and the, the, the word transition means, means change. So we were worried about any change for Kerr because of him being non-verbal, he couldn't express to us his anxieties and his worries and fears. So we had to take that on as well, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I was worried about getting the right placement for both my sons, um, especially for one of them who is non-verbal. And I was concerned that maybe um, he wouldn't fit in because of his behaviour difficulties. 
my biggest worry for transition um, was that you know trying to do something that was right for my daughter and for the family unit and basically to find a place that she was going to was going to make her happy first and foremost. Um, she now attends two day opportunities and she's really happy with loads and loads of opportunities there for her. Sometimes we worry about things that'll never happen. Wonder what advice our families would give themselves. We would say relax more. There is a there is a transitional period from from school yeah. to to this, um, and it is fairly long. So that you, you don't have to make any immediate choices. And it, as I said before, it's, it's about progression, not regression. Um, it's new opportunities, and Kerr was going from a a child essentially to an adult. So there's always going to be that change. Mm. Um, and one thing I would say about the places that Kerr does go to, tuned in and art space, they're very open to people calling in and dropping in and meeting the staff. Um, and bringing your family members with you. We and both both our girls, I believe, have been here, and they liked it as well. You know, which mm -hmm. which relaxed the the family atmosphere around it all. You know, um, so that would be it for me. So consider all the information, um, locations, length of days, transport, lunches. You know how it works for your family. Make sure you avail of all the opportunities and do visits, and and don't rule anything out to begin with. Um, you might be surprised what's on offer, and try things out speak with services and do trial periods see if they're willing to sort of maybe give your child you know a, a sort of trial period a few weeks just to see if they'd like it or not see if they'd fit in because you're never stuck there and the decisions aren't set in stone there's always an option to change placements or move your child somewhere else if things aren't working out make sure you take time to wrap your own head around what's going on it's a big change and will require some adjustments and that you know it's it's the, the way it comes here, it's your usual routine and just keep calm. Because of the anxieties and fears and you know your child has to leave school at some point, although you're, they're there until 19, some parents really want to just keep them there forever and keep them a protected shell. But it is a case of you really have to open up and you know just embrace the transition, take it on a month by month basis, make sure you try and do something um, each month or every couple of months because it's a two year period but it flies by and all of a sudden you're left with a decision to make where's your child going and at that point you know it, it will become very anxious and, and you will become very overwhelmed with all the feelings that's going on about letting your child go but definitely our experience now has been if we if we do something and go and visit the placements, bring your family, um, be in touch with your social worker, your key workers, um, the managers of Chundan or, or any of the places that you want to go and see. Go and talk and just really get yourself out there. See what's out there, see what's available and then just weigh it up. But really don't leave it to the end of the two year period because it will be all become too much. My experience happened uh, during lockdown, which was a unique experience as most places were all closed, so you couldn't get to visit. Um, and I personally had some knowledge of placements, so that was a great help. But my advice would be to go and visit all the places on offer as soon as you can, so that you know what's on offer um, and what would suit your child best. So speak with your transition officer, um, listen to their advice and their guidance and always ask for help if you need it and ask plenty of questions. The, the blended like approach yeah. for care has really worked out well. Yeah. Yeah. So two days in one placement and three days in another. And again, it could be any mixture, any ratio of days. It's just whatever suits the child. And you won't be long on knowing after a month or so what suits and what doesn't suit yeah. with the feedback and what a parent would pick up on their gut feeling of how their child is setting it in. Uh, so my message uh, to parents would be not to be wary of transition, but to embrace it. You have time to, to look around you and you have time to get used to it. And uh, I think it has been definitely yeah. benefited our child. And, and yeah. change at that stage for them is good. Change is for the better. Yeah. Although we're all fearful of change, but really this, is, this has been the best opportunity yeah. that um, Kehar has really taken on board yeah. and has and his life has been amazing for him. He has developed so much more, so much more happier than I ever thought he would be. I always thought that school was that protected yeah. field for him, but yeah. it's unbelievable the transition and the change it has made in him. That's and it's does. really for the good. Yeah. If you want to know anything else about transition, contact these.
Bye. Bye. Bye.